Hi, welcome back to my channel. <laughs> I know this is a long overdue um, you know, lesson for you, but here I am, okay, for chapter 2, okay, from 5, Biology PSSM. Alright, so our subtopic for today is going to be on 2.1, Structure of a Leaf. Okay, so uh, let's see what are we going to learn in this subtopic. Okay, so the learning standard is to describe the external, okay, external structures of a leaf. Okay, we have uh, two structure here, lamina and petiole, that we have to look into. And then we are also going to identify the internal structures of a leaf lamina. Okay, we have the upper epidermis, palisade mesophyll, spongy mesophyll, lower epidermis, and also vascular bundle. So all this you have have already learned this in form 4 okay chapter 2 uh, cell organization okay so plant leaf the organ okay you have seen all this so today we are going to just look a little bit in detail okay before we begin let's look at the changes of leaf color in the four season country um, yeah, so leaf, we have many colors of leaves, correct? So the most common one are the green ones. So the colors of leaves actually depend on the pigment molecules contained in them. So examples of pigments are chlorophyll, carotenoid, and also anthocyanin. Okay, the most common one we know is chlorophyll because it makes the plant green. Right, so now the chlorophyll pigment causes the leaf to appear green. And in four season countries, the leaves are green during summer because the light intensity is very high. But during autumn and winter, some plants stop making chlorophyll. Okay, so this chlorophyll are broken down into smaller molecules. And without chlorophyll, other pigments such as carotenoid, okay, the orange one, and the anthocyanin will be produced and causing colors of leaves to change into yellow and red. So different pigments in the leaf that causes the leaf to have different colors. So all these colors and all this we are going to see throughout this chapter. Okay, there's a video here. Okay, introduction. <laughs> uh, travel deep inside a leaf. Uh, I will put this video in the link below. And you can have a look. Uh, watch this video before you come back for the next lesson. Okay, now we know that a leaf is the main organ of plant, okay, which carry out photosynthesis. Alright, now the structure of a leaf can be divided into two parts, okay, which are the external structure and also the internal structure. Okay, so now let's look at the external structure, which is actually, uh, you know, commonly it consists of uh, lamina and petiole. Okay, lamina is the leaf blade. Okay, if you look at this, oops. Okay, so this is lamina, the leaf blade. And lamina is a broad and thin, okay, they are smooth and it's the green part of the leaf. Okay, green part of the uh, leaf. Eh? So now, lamina is usually flat shape. Okay, all leaves are flat shape. Okay, and it provides a white surface in order for, you know, the cell that has chloroplasts for maximum absorption of sunlight. So, you know, wider surface for photosynthesis. Now, lamina is also thin, okay, uh, which allow gases involved in photosynthesis to diffuse efficiently in the leaf. Okay, it has a midrib and vein, okay, midrib and also vein, um, which actually contain vascular tissues. What are the vascular tissues? Xylem and phloem. So, petiole is actually the leaf stalk that connects the lamina to the stem of the plant. Okay, so that is petiole and the petiole stretches out into the lamina producing a network middle veins. Okay, so they have a lot of veins to actually support the lamina. So if you can look, this is the clearer picture okay, of, uh, of a leaf which has a lot of veins. Huh? And yeah, this is petiole, okay, lamina, vein and midrib. So we know that petiole is the leaf stalk and lamina is the blade. So, where are the xylem and the phloem found in a leaf? Yeah, that is in the veins. Alright?
Okay, now let's look at the internal structure of a leaf lamina. Now, if you have a leaf, okay, if you cut it off a little bit, okay, something like this, you cut it off and you open it up, okay, you can get a structure that looks like this. Okay, so a structure that looks like this. Uh, so we say this is the leaf structure, okay, internal structure of a leaf. So let's start with the uppermost layer, which is the cuticle, the outermost, okay, layer. Now, cuticles are, okay, if we draw it, sorry, if we draw it in this way, it is the 2D dimension, okay, 2 dimension. So, you can see we have the cuticle, we have the upper epidermis, then we have the palisade mesophyll, okay, we have the spongy mesophyll, lower epidermis, and also cuticle again, all right, and then we have stoma over here, um, can't see this, this is the guard cells, okay, and then we have the vascular bundle, okay, which is the vein, okay, the vein that is consisting of xylem and phloem, okay, xylem and also phloem. Okay, now let's look at the structure um, one by one. <clears throat> okay, now um, cuticle. So let's start with cuticle first. All right, erase this off. Okay, now cuticle is actually a vexy structure. Okay, it's vexy covering. It protects the leaf. All right, it is also actually waterproof. Okay, because it needs to prevent excessive water loss by the plant. And it also has no color it's transparent okay it allows light to penetrate into the leaf okay it has to uh, yeah light has to penetrate so that's why it is uh, transparent all right and then uh, let's move on to upper epidermis okay so upper epidermis all right um, they actually consist of a layer of epidermal cells Okay, if you don't know what is epidermal cells, go back and check back form 4, chapter 2. Alright, so epidermal cells is the main layer for upper epidermis. Name also upper epidermis, right? Okay, so um, now, but this upper epidermis, it does not have chloroplasts. Okay, it protects the underlying cells from damage. Okay, it is actually translucent. Alright, so it actually allows sunlight to pass through easily through the cells below. Okay, so no chloroplast yet in the upper epidermis, alright. So where is the chloroplast? Later we will see. So light has to pass through until it reaches the chloroplast. So upper epidermis and also the cuticles are transparent in color. Okay, and then we have the lower epidermis. Okay, so now the lower epidermis is consisting also of epidermal cells but also again without the chloroplast. Okay, but they actually helps, uh, you know, in protecting the leaf from damage. It also has many stomata, okay, which allows exchange of gases. So, stomata structure you are going to see in the next subtopics, um, you know, so opening and closing of stoma. So, now we just look at what is stoma made of, okay. So, stoma is surrounded by two gut cells, all right. So, um, yeah, it allows gases of exchange. Alright, so carbon dioxide will diffuse into the leaf and oxygen diffuses out the leaf uh, via the stomata. Alright, and then we have um, palisade mesophyll. Okay, now palisade mesophyll, if you look at the picture here, okay, look at this one, palisade mesophyll. Eh? So palisade mesophyll is actually consisting of palisade mesophyll cell. Okay, that are closely packed okay they are closely packed you have whenever you draw you have to draw them like you know very near to each other okay very near to each other and um, it is right below the upper epidermis okay so it actually enables the cells to obtain maximum sunlight okay and each cells contain the largest number of chloroplasts so the most chloroplasts can be found in palisade mesophyll cell all right, for the maximum absorption of sunlight to carry out photosynthesis. All right, so most of the chloroplasts are found there. All right, and then we have the spongy mesophyls, which are irregular in shape. Okay, uh, they are loosely arranged and they have many large air spaces. Okay, between the cells. If you look at the drawing here, just look at the air space. A lot of air space, they are not, uh, you know, closely arranged like the palisade mesophyll. So, 
this uh, large air spaces actually facilitate the diffusion of carbon dioxide and oxygen between the cells of the leaf. So oxygen can diffuse out, carbon dioxide can diffuse in easily when there is this air spaces. Okay, so spongy mesophyll is located below the palisade mesophyll layer. Okay, they still have chloroplasts, but it is lesser than the palisade mesophyll cells. Okay, it also actually you know helps in photosynthesis. So whatever absorption of light is not being absorbed at palisade mesophyll, spongy mesophyll can still absorb them and carry out photosynthesis. Okay, then we have. A vascular bundle okay now vascular bundle you know it is you know located in the veins of the leaves it consists of xylem and phloem tissues okay xylem we know that transport water and mineral ions okay from the roots to the leaves and phloem transport dissolve uh, organic substances okay or the products of photosynthesis from the leaves to all parts of the plants yeah that's it so these are the structure of um a leaf okay so when you draw them so when you draw them later uh make sure you label them and you know the function of each structure of the leaf all right so here's another video okay on the general structure of leaf all right so i will also put this link in the description box below so you can have a look at this video and learn further okay so yeah this is the you know um, activity zone that you should do okay you must do actually because when you draw and label the internal structure of the leaf you actually will know and will remember what are the structures involved where is the cuticle where is the epidermis where is the palisade mesophyll uh, you know the spongy mesophyll where are all this? Where is the stoma? How do we draw the stoma? How do we draw the gut cells? Okay, how do we draw the vascular bundle? Okay, so you need to do this. So go and do this. Okay, whenever you do your notes, make sure this is in your notes drawn by you. All right. Okay, we are done. So, as usual, go and do formative practice 2.1. Okay. Um, there are only six questions here. So they say here, name two external structures of a leaf, already discussed here. Importance of cuticle in leaves, already discussed as well. Name five internal structure naming, so you just have to name them. And then state the function of xylem and phloem. Alright, uh, I think that is quite simple. Now number five, it says that the layer of cuticle and upper epidermis is transparent. Why? Justify. So it's transparent. Why? Give your reasons. And number six is compare the layers of palisade mesophyll and spongy mesophyll. So how does it look like? Okay, how is palisade mesophyll arranged and spongy mesophyll? So yeah, that's it. We are done. So I will end my video here. And thank you for watching. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. <laughs> Bye.